Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. It's good to see you. I know I've been off for some time, but I'm back with a blast. And I want to say thank you for watching our videos. Thank you for your support. Please learn to subscribe, like, share. If you like what you're seeing, let somebody else get the information. So what are we doing today? We are going to practice various management questions. And it's going to be like a five-part series. This is the first part. So it's I've tried to make it short so that it will be interesting, not too, you know, heavy. So please relax back and enjoy the series. Thank you very much. So question one, what's fire risk management? A, the management of biological toxins and infectious agents in laboratories. B, the management of laboratory workers and patients. C, the management of normal flora in the body. And D, the management of laboratory equipment. So what do you think is the answer? The answer is A, very good if you got it. Question two. Blood sample collection in a medical laboratory requires a trained personnel known as a one, hematologist, two, phlebotomist, three, bleeder, four, vampire. <laughs> so what do you think is the answer? Let me tell you, let me tell you a secret. If you want to really look at those people's problems, just call them vampire. That's the guy named those people. But whatever happens, I don't take responsibility. So the answer is phlebotomies. Uh, question number three says, mention to routinely screen viral agents that are capable of making blood transfusion hazardous. HIV and uh, hepatitis B, E. coli and hepatitis C, Staphylococcus aureus and HIV, Pseudomonas originosa and herpes virus. Which one would you go? I would go with B because E. coli is not a virus. Staphylococcus is not a virus. Pseudomonas is not a virus. So I think A will be our best option. So question four, what is bio-risk? A, it is the risk associated with biological materials. B, risky behaviors by lab personnel. C, Risky behaviors by patients, D, biospecimens that are risky. Just want to ask you, are the biospecimens that are not risky? Always treat every biospecimen as a risky sample. That is the way to survive in the lab. So the answer is if it's a risk associated with biological materials. So Question number five, one of these is not a risk that one encounters when working with biological materials. Injuries and infections, yeah, and encounter some of those. Death and disabilities, yeah, you could die if you're careless enough. Lucky enough. Air pollution and environmental contamination, if you do not have management um, uh, Good management procedures that could happen. Recovery from illness. I will go with recovery from illness. Question number six. One of these is not a place where work with biological materials occur. Laboratories and industries, disposal sites and hospitals, research institutes and mortuary, and home kitchen. Mm. Which one would you choose? I will go with home kitchen because um, these other things work with risky materials. Question number seven, the containment principles, technologies, and practices implemented to prevent unintentional notes, notes, unintentional exposure to pathogens and the toxins or their unintentional release. Your key word is unintentional, right? So you have A, laboratory biosafety, B, <clears throat> laboratory biosecurity, C, laboratory bio-risk. So which one would you go with? I would go with laboratory biosafety because we're talking about unintentional exposure 
talking about unintentional release. That's why I kept insisting on intentional. On the other hand, protection, control, and accountability for valuable biological materials within laboratories in order to prevent their unauthorized access, loss, theft, misuse, diversion, or intentional release is called. Remember, the other question had to do with unintentional. This one we are talking, this person has an intent. Okay, and they are having unauthorized access to the so with this I will go to biosecurity. Question number nine. What is the skin disinfectant used during blood collection in medical laboratories? A 70% alcohol. B absolute ethanol. <laughs> C 80% alcohol. D, 90% alcohol. Please, whatever you do, warning. Uh, any alcohol you find in the lab, whether ethanol or this, don't drink it. All right? Do not drink it. It is not safe. Okay? After having said that, I would go with 70% alcohol. So question number 10. The sample collection point of a laboratory handles what do they handle sample collection and documentation sample collection and payment for tests sample collection and storage sample collection and analysis what do they do the sample collection point of a laboratory collects samples and documents those samples okay so that they can be distinguished by the time they are taken to the lab so i will go with a then before we enter into question number 11, if you have not subscribed, please and please subscribe. Give me a like and please give me a sweet comment. Goodness sake, these things are free. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, question number 11. Which of these is not true? Samples collected for routine analysis in medical laboratories include blood and urine, that's A, B, stool and sputum, C, CSF and tissue, D, none of them. In fact, every of these is a sample that is collected in fact. So I will go with none of the above. Okay, so question number 12. What is the full meaning of the acronym AMP in the AMP model for bio risk management. A assessment, mitigation, performance. B assessment, motivation, performance. C assessment, mitigation, perfection. D assessment, motivation, perfection. So which one do you choose? Well, if you chose A, clap for yourself. <laughs> so question number 13, which of these is not an example of biosecurity measures? A, doors locked, you know, doors with locks and passwords. B, card readers, biometrics. C, cameras, alarms. Uh, D, biosafety cabinet and SOP. Remember that when you're talking about biosecurity measures, you're talking about measures that are put in place to avoid um, unauthorized access to biological materials in the back. So I think the only one that looks different is the biosafety cabinet and SOP. Question number 14, which of these is not an example of biosafety measures. Remember the biosafety measures, you want to avoid unintentional um, spread you know, to the community, unintentional uh, exposure by, by the workers to biospecimen. So you have A, engineering controls and biosafety cabinet, B, lab work practices, C, 
SOPE, which I've explained before, and SOPs, um, standard operating procedures, then D, doors with locks and security guards. I will go with those with locks and security guards. Those are biosecurity measures. Okay, um, question number 15. Basic mechanical biosecurity measures across all laboratories include keyword, mechanical, mechanical keyword. Okay, so we have locks, walls, buildings, we have engineering controls and biosafety cabinets, we have good lab of practices, we have PP and SOP. Remember, keyword is mechanical, so I will go with locks or walls, buildings. Okay, question number 16, the need to continually improve the system is an aspect of bio-risk management known as A, assessment, B, mitigation, C, performance, D, all of the above, I would go with performance. Question number 17, measures taken to reduce or eliminate risk are part of the dash component of the bio-risk management. A, assessment, B, mitigation, C, performance, D, all of the above, I would go with mitigation. Question number 18, <clears throat> excuse me. Risk encountered during blood sample collections include pricks, cuts, spillage, and infections. B, vomiting by frightened patients. I haven't seen that one before, but maybe it could be there, I don't know. C, resistance by frightened patients. Oh, I have seen a lot of frightened patients. D, all of them. The answer is prick, cuts spillage and infection. Question 19. So basic personal protection equipment in a medical laboratory includes your lab coats and your hand gloves, B, your safety glasses, C, your face shields, D, all of the above. Happy to tell you that all of the above are all PPE that are used in the lab. Question 20. Complete this formula. Bio risk equal to what? Biosafety and biosecurity risk. B, bio risk equal to biohazard and biosecurity risk. C, equal to biosafety and biohazard risk. D, none of the both. Wow. Looks like a tough one, but let's look carefully. I would go with A. <laughs> That's the correct answer. So having come to the end of this session, I want to say thank you very much. Please, before you log out, subscribe, comment, and give us that share. Thank you so, so very much. Bye-bye. Take care of yourself. See you in part two. Thank you.